Hi, my name is Anthony Shalou. I'm responsible for the battery market at Anton Parr. In this video series of Battery Expert, I would like to give you an overview of the most common characterization techniques used in the R&D and manufacturing of lithium-ion batteries. Throughout the manufacturing process, the proper characterization of battery materials is crucial. There are two types of characterization, physical and chemical characterization, and they are both complementary to each other. In this video series, we will focus on the physical properties and the techniques used to accurately measure them, since these characteristics will have an immediate effect on the energy density, cycle life, safety, and overall performance of the battery. A typical process starts with the production of the electrodes. For this purpose, the starting point is powder raw material, such as NMC or LFP for cathode and graphite for anode. At this stage, properties such as pore size and DET surface area, which is also known as specific surface area, are measured with a gas sorption analyzer, also known as surface area analyzer. Particle size and size distribution are measured with a laser diffraction or with dynamic light scattering technology, depending on the size of the particles. And exact images of particle shapes are captured with a dynamic image analysis. Apart from that, the solid density of any powder is important parameter to measure. And this is especially true for battery materials. Important solid density parameters are the true density, which is also known as skeletal density, and this is measured with a technology called gas spectrometry, and tap density, which is measured with a tap density analyzer. It is also necessary to properly measure certain rheological properties of powders, such as flowability, compressibility, cohesion, and internal friction angle at different humidity levels. Here, a powder rheometer is a tool of choice. For the powders, parameters such as crystal structure, crystallite size, and degree of crystallinity are measured with a technology called X-ray diffraction, or XRD for short. In the next stage of the manufacturing process, the powder raw material is mixed with binders, conductive additives, and a small amount of solvent to form a homogeneous slurry. Here, specific physical properties of the battery slurry are very important in order to optimize the subsequent steps of the manufacturing process. Such properties are sedimentation stability, slurry behavior during mixing, and behavior during pumping and coating. All these parameters are measured with a rotational rheometer. For a quick QC check, a rotational viscometer is also used to measure the viscosity of a slurry. After the slurry is prepared and properly characterized, the next step would be coating it onto current collectors. This coating process is then followed by a drying step and a compacting step, which is also called calendaring. Here, the electrodes are passed through two rollers running against each other in the purpose of reducing the porosity of the electrode and to reduce the overall volume of the battery. After these three steps, one way to test the adhesion of the slurry onto the current collector would be to perform scratch and indentation testing with an instrumental scratch and indentation platform. In the last stages of the cell manufacturing process, after cutting and stacking multiple layers of electrodes and separators, everything is packed together into an enclosure. Then an electrolyte solution, which is a lithium-containing salt in an organic solvent, is carefully added. At this step, besides the crucially important chemical composition of the electrolytes, it is important to properly measure physical characteristics such as density, viscosity, and flammability, which are measured with a density meter, a viscometer, and a flashpoint tester, respectively. And this is how a typical lithium-ion battery cell is made. 